basic pre-processing stage that we are going to apply on our data on our time series data so that algorithm that will come into picture for our entire data that is exactly my auto arima but before understanding this auto arima you have to understand what exactly is this arima so if i have to split this fancy word arima arima is nothing but it is just a combination of my ar model my i terminology plus my this ma model so it is nothing but plus AR plus I plus MA. So what exactly is this AR? What is this I? And what is this MA? So AR is nothing but my autoregressive model and I is nothing but integrating or you can say also uh, differencing as well. And this MA is nothing. It is just moving average. It is just moving average. And this autoregressive gives us value which is known as p this integrating gives us value which is known as d and this moving average gives us value which is known as q it means my arima model which is a combination of ar plus i plus ma gives me a pair of p comma d comma q and it is a most important factor that you have to consider for any of your arima model this is a most important point you can say so how you have to compute this p how you have to compute this t and how exactly you have to compute this q so using pacf so what exactly is pacf pacf is nothing but my partial auto correlation factor so using this fancy term which i will discuss later using this fancy term i can compute my p and how you can compute d using differencing concept you can compute your d parameter and using your acf concept which is nothing my auto correlation factor which gives my value of q so you can achieve this pdq pair by using your pacf so pacf will give me my p value differencing will give me my d value and this acf will give me my some q value so you have to consider these three major fancy terms to get an idea behind how exactly arima model works once i have a brief understanding of arima model so what exactly is this auto arima auto arima is nothing but it is just a auto ml model or i can say automated machine learning model of arima so if i have to summarize all these stuff anyhow i have to understand this arima because once you will understand this arima model auto arima is nothing but it is just an automated version of this arima so what exactly is this model in this we don't have to consider or i can say we don't have to set a manually this pair or i can say we don't have to set a manual value of this pair auto arima model will consider it as in an automated way and in this arima we have to consider this pair in a manual way that's a basic difference between both of my model so in the next session very first we will understand what is this acf and we will try to visualize it as well then slowly we will move ahead to this differencing term then after it we will move ahead to this pacf which is again a fancy term so that's all about our approach to learn the arima model let me open a new page over here yeah so let's understand what exactly is this acf let's say i have some data points over here let's say my data points are nothing but 100 110 120 130 140 and let's say i have multiple data points over here so if i am going to say acf order is one let's say i am just going to assume it so what exactly it means it means these are exactly my all the data points let me write over here so what exactly the meaning of this acf order is one so it basically means this is related to this one this is related to this one this is related to this one and this is related to this one let's say i am going to name it as x1 let's say i am going to name it as x2 x3 and till xn so if i have to write a mathematical equation of this one then i can say x1 is nothing but some factor let's say i'm going to assume it as lambda so lambda times of x2 plus some error or some residuals so i can easily write my x1 
in this format. So whenever any of the equation has this format, it means there is some correlation in data. Try to understand this point. There is some correlation in this data. Now you will think what if my ACF order is 2. So in such case, let's say these all are my data points. Let's say 20, 30 and 40. So let's say these all are my data points. So its meaning is nothing but it is just going to depend on this one and it is going to depend on this one. So it means this follows a ACF order of 2. So we must have that situation so that we can easily remove this correlation, this correlation from my data. You will see this is also follows some kind of correlation because here you will see there is some kind of dependency over here in my data. Similarly, over here you will see this x1 equals to lambda times of x2 plus some residual. It means there is some kind of dependency in my data. It means there is some correlation in this data. And in time series, there is definitely will be some trend between some current data or I can say current observations. Let me write over here. So definitely there will be some trend between some current observations and let's say some previous observation. But after how many rows this relationship starts to fail. That's what my Q will tell. So what exactly Q will do? So Q is nothing but it gives us an idea of after how many rows our relationship is no more significant or I can say after how many rows we can minimize this effect of correlation which we will see over here in my data. Let's say I have some cases over here. Let's say uh, between 100 to 110 I have some correlation. Assume it I have a correlation as 0 0.8 and let's say between 100 to 120 I have again some correlation assume 0 0.6 and let's say between 100 to 105 I have some correlation, assume it as 0.2. So now we will see over here in all the three cases, we will see our correlation starts decreasing. So in such case, we will choose value as ACF equals to 3. Because at this third step, you will see we can minimize our effect of correlation. That's why our ACF, which is nothing but my Q equals to 3. So in such scenarios, in such scenarios, whenever I have these three cases, in such scenarios, my Q will become three. So let's try to visualize what is ACF. And this exactly is a graphical representation of relationship of all the rows of data. So in this visual, on this Y axis, I have basically my correlation. And on this x axis, you will see 0, 5, 10. These are nothing but my lag index. On x axis, I have lag index. And on y axis, I have some correlation. And the boundaries that you will see over here, look at this boundary, this one, this one. These are all my correlation values. These all are my correlation values among the data. So you will see over here, very first, I have a correlation as 1.0. So what exactly it means? It means I have a correlation of 1. So let me consider the previous use case. Let's say I have this data points over here. Let's say 100, uh, 110, 120, 130 and 140. So it means 100 with 100 occurs a correlation of 1. It means 100 with 100 having a correlation of 1. Or I can say at lag 0, the differences at the indices is zero. If you have to summarize, you can also say in this fancy word as well. So what exactly is the correlation of this one? This is nothing but 100 with 100. And this is correlation is nothing but correlation of 110 with respect to 100, which is this one. So you will see its correlation value is somewhere close to 0.1. It is somewhere close to 0.2 at index 1 because this is my index 1. Similarly, at index 2, this is exactly my index 2. So at index 2, we will talk about correlation between this one, which is nothing my 120 to 110. 
so i can say between this one or i can say between this 120 to 110 at index 2 i have correlation approx this one so this is exactly somewhere close to 0.015 and you will notice over here at this index third this index third i can say this is at boundary and this is the optimal boundary and this value is somewhere close to 0.1 it means my q value is 3 because whenever this correlation value touches this boundary in such case i can consider that order as my q value so we will see over here at this third index it is exactly touching my boundary whereas at this fourth index it is below the boundary so we can either choose q equals to 3 or we can also choose q equals to 4 so now a question will arise how exactly i can come up with these q values so in this acf plot we will actually looking for those points that are on boundary or i can say that are on boundary or that are near to boundary you will see at this third index and at this fourth index at third index it is just on the boundary and on this fourth index it is below the boundary that's why i am going to consider my q value as 3 and as 4 as well and in this acf by default optimum value of boundary is 0.1 it means acf consider that correlation which will be less than 0.1 is a good value so according to acf if any index has correlation has greater than 0.1 acf will not consider that correlation as a good correlation or i can say as a good value now you will think there are many cases over here where my index whatever index over here in such cases my correlation is below the boundary but there is a hack here when it will first touch the boundary that value will be considered as for value of q it means in such case my q will be only 3 not 4 so according to this acf plot it will give me my q equals to 3 so we all are talking about this p comma t comma q pair so we have already achieved this q value so anyhow we have to get this p as well as d value for my entire arima model so that's all about this session hope so you will love it thank you have a nice day keep learning keep growing keep practicing